Welcome to vanofaction.com. In this episode, we're installing an awning. And this episode's a little longer than normal because installing an awning on a roof rack of a van, whether it's a custom roof rack like the Van of Action roof rack, or whether it's an aftermarket roof rack, there will be some challenges trying to get the two to marry together. So I wanted to show you every step, every detail, and explain to you the thought process so that even though yours may be a little bit different, you'll understand the concept of what you need to do. Let's get started. <laughs> When it came time to think about awnings, we researched every kind of awning you could imagine. Everything from buying a tarp and just bungee cording it to the side of the van somehow to a, a, a fancy schmancy remote control uh, electronic uh, kind of a deal that came out. Everything and everything in between. And we spoke to dealers who were selling them. We spoke to people over the years who were using them. And we came to a couple of conclusions right off the bat. We we knew that we we wanted one that was up there all the time, that you, you, could, you didn't have to tie up or bungee cord up. We wanted something more sophisticated than that. And in speaking to people who were using them, we found over and over again, they were saying, we don't like these electric awnings. They won't stay out if the wind's up a little bit. If you park near the water or park at the top of a hill, you can't deploy the awning because they're programmed to withdraw themselves, close themselves up if the wind gets too strong. And it doesn't have to be very strong because there's nothing holding the, uh, the far end of that awning up. It's all cantilevered off the side of the van. So it makes sense it wouldn't take a lot of abuse, but we often do park near breezy places. So we want to be able to use it then. And uh, and so we didn't. We made the decision early on we were, we were going to have a crank awning, even though if you watched my video for wiring, I've got two circuits up in my combiner box, 12 volt circuits available to me in case we wanted a power awning, but we're not going to do that now. We use those circuits for lights or cameras or something else. The next question was, whose awning are we going to get? And again, speaking to people who sell them, people who install them, people who fix them, and people who use them. Now, as always, this is not an endorsement of any kind. I'm not making any money for telling you this. is just my opinion. Take this and $1.50 and buy yourself a coffee anywhere in town. Over and over again, the awnings manufactured by the Fiamma Corporation always come to the top now they're the most expensive ones there's two or three other manufacturers and you can you can save three or four hundred maybe five hundred dollars between the fiamma and the others but van of action roof rack and roof clip system you know that you have next to no money at all you've saved a ton of money in getting this far right now i have less than three hundred dollars invested in my whole roof rack system so I'm comfortable spending a little bit more for the uh, on a better quality awning if I have to. And that's the wonderful thing about doing it this way. If you're a DIYer, there are some things that you'll have skills to do. Focus on those skills and save money where you can. Because there's some places where you just can't save a lot. And awnings is one of them. Either you buy crap or you pay a lot of money for something decent. So we went with a, we thought we'd get a Fiamma awning. The next question was, do, can I get a Fiamma awning that's going to work on this roof rack? Or do I, how, many, how much modification do I have to make? And to be honest with you, I made a video about a year ago on a comparison between one roof clip system the Fiamma, the Fiamma awnings have and the Van of Action roof clip system. And I thought, well, if I have to do that, I can, I'll make it work somehow, but it's going to be a little bit tougher. They make a clip specifically to go with the roof rack. But I did some research and I found the Fiamma makes a number of awnings for a number of different applications. And one of them is... One of them is putting an awning on the side of a motorhome or a, uh, a trailer. And for that, you get a different model number. And it comes with a clip, uh, and it clips like this. And if, if it was going on the side, it would be, I don't know if you can see this, it'd be mounted on the side of the vehicle because the vehicles are too high. So it'd be mounted on the side of the vehicle, and the awning sits in this little track. It sits on the bottom and sits in the little track on the top. There's only three bearing points. And I thought, boy, that might just work. That's going to work out really well, I think. So if I take this flat bracket and put it where I need to put it, it'll sit up against my roof rack just fine. That's, that's an ideal situation. I love that. I want to keep it down low enough that I can somehow get a seal in behind here to keep the water from running into my door. I'm going to get some kind of a... Uh, I'm going to make something that'll, that'll do that. That'll be another video. But if I mount this clip like this, the awning will sit up here. It should work. Now the crank, the only thing, the, well, the one thing that I'm concerned about is the crank. And it looks like the distance from this ra rail to the outside of the van is going to work. I'm going to try it. We'll see how that plays out. The biggest concern here is the structural connection, though. Let's see here. You see, the awning itself is designed 
to have two bolts go through these holes and that's what carries the weight these two bolts now if i put it on my clip obviously those bolts are above the rail so i've got to beef this up somehow and i want to do that the other question the other concern that i have is because all the weight is at the top of the awning there's going to be a tendency for it to want to do this it's going to want to pull away from the side and i want to make sure that this rail doesn't give, doesn't twist. It's soft aluminum. It may deflect a little bit on uh, uh, when, when the weight of the awning is on it. So I want to make sure I, that I prevent that. Now, there, these clips go in three separate places, one near each end and one near the middle. The installers I spoke to said there's a little bit of play. Fiamma tells, they, on the back of the awning, there's a mark on where these clips are supposed to go, but I was told that there's a, a little bit of play. I mean, it's, clearly, it's clear why they want to have that, and we'll, I'll address that when I get there. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in. I'm going to use, I'm going to build a, a, a bracket for the top part. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's take a look at this. Well, that was getting too complicated. I hope you can hear me okay. Here's a section I drew. This is the roof rail and then the clip. It's not exactly correct drawn, but the measurements are pretty close. And this clip for the awning is going to mount something like this. Now, my concern is I have to add something to the top here to hold the top of that bracket and I want to keep make sure that this piece does not travel this way there's not a lot of force pushing it that way when the weight of the awning is on it I don't want it to start to lean out so in order to do that this is what I've decided what I've come up with I'm going to pack add a half an inch of aluminum here so that this comes out level with the top. And then I'm going to make a bracket that will come out this way, like so. Like so, like that. And I'm going to be able to bolt the awning to that. I'm going to be able to bolt this through here all the way down with the with the uh, with the long bolts. I'll also be able to put one or two fasteners through here to hold it down. In doing that, I will transfer the weight of the awning back onto this rail. It's gonna it'll really it'll it'll really anchor it down well. Now remember, I said there was a little bit of give on where these brackets go in terms of right to left. There's a limit to how far you can move them, but it's really critical that the that the, what it you anchor on top here also anchors to a side member. That's how we're going to transfer the load across to add the strength to prevent the deflection. And so depending how you built your rack and where you're putting your awning, you may have to add another one of these somewhere along the way. And this is the material I'm going to be using to fix up my roof rack. It's really about twice as much material as I'm going to need. I went to my local machine shop. Every city, every town has at least two or three of them. And those guys are working with aluminum all the time. And they have leftovers. They, they sell it by the pound. I was even able to find this. Look, here's a piece of half inch stock for my packing piece. It's gonna look so good. All in, this was about $35. Just amazing. Take the time to shop around. Okay, full disclosure, first screw up. I have no idea how I did it, but I measured this front piece I have to put on, and I measured it too short, and they cut it exactly the length I gave them, and I gave them to the 16th of an inch, and there isn't any way I can hold the tape measure to get the number that I gave them, so God knows what I did wrong. Now, I was thinking I'd like to just hang on to this and maybe go back and get another one, but the truth is I'm not doing that today. I'm going to work on this. And so, in adjusting things, making things right, I've always been a little bit concerned about whistling up here, you know. I had those holes on, like, wide open, and I always thought they might whistle. So I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a nice little end cap to cover both those ends, round, them, round off the corners. It'll look like it belonged there. Only you and I will know that I screwed that up. Okay, well, I've added the front cross piece and I made it the same thickness or the two a full two inch 
like the side rail. So I don't have to pack the front at all. It just carries straight across. And now I'm going to locate where the bracket's going to go in the right left direction. I'm going to make my clip so that I catch this bolt that's holding the roof clips down. That'll be a good connection. I'll add a second one here and then one or two. I'll add two in the side rail which will transfer the stress that way. So that's just a matter of figuring out how I'm going to do that. And I'm going to cut that clip for each of these clips out of this channel because it's thick. I want that strength that you're going to get out of the thickness of it. So I'll just rip this off at whatever height I need, cut off the back of the flange and make my bracket out of that. Now what about up and down? You don't want your awning touching the roof, that's for sure. You want it up off the roof a little bit. And you'll notice on these brackets there's a couple of holes. And all those holes do is keep the bottom of the awning in place and keep it from popping out when you're going down the road. I've been told by several ins installers there's no problem putting a screw this way into the rail to do the, to accomplish the same thing. Once the awning's installed, open it up a couple of feet and just drop a couple of screws in and you're home free. So I think I'm going to put a half inch spacer here. I'll just put a mark. And that's going to be my mark for how far the clip is going to come down. That'll help me establish the back of the clip. Now there are absolutely more sophisticated ways to do this, but I used an angle grinder and a hand file just to show you how easy it is to make these clips. It's not that hard, just figure out what you want to do, take your time, plan your cuts, and it's easily done. Okay, I, I hope you can see this okay. Every clip is going to be different. This is my first attempt in real time. You just I want you to see how you cut that out of a C channel just by a little. Okay, I wanted to take that bolt out. So then this will sit like this. And in doing this, I'm going to, I'm going to be able to use the one bolt that holds down the holds down the roof rack to the clip will also hold the awning down, which is perfect. The awning bracket. So I'll get two of these. I get this one. One more closer to the corner, two on this side, and then this guy will mount like that. You know what? I think that's going to look really good. I think it's going to be fine. Now, your rack, your situation may be different. Your bracket may be different. Doesn't matter. The thing is to get a good heavy C channel. This is quarter by three sixteenths by four, which gives you a four inch. A little bit better than four inches on the side here, which is great. Good I'll be able to solid, take all heavy angle. I'll transfer the load onto this long arm going this way. There's no way in the world that this outside rail is going to going to rack. One down, two more to go. And here's the back bracket, completely installed. It's nice and flush on the front. I've got real good anchoring into the rail, and then these two going through this cross member to transfer the weight. That's not going to go anywhere. That's nice and solid. Now that particular bracket doesn't have a clip under it. So I could place those two top bolts wherever I wanted to. The middle bracket does have a roof clip under it. And so I'm going to use the two bolts that hold the roof clip to hold the bracket down. That's going to make things a little more complicated for drilling the holes, but not impossible. And I'll show you how that's going to work. So the first, oh, shit. that's not good. That's no good. What the hell? Come here. Okay. So the first step is to line up the front. You want the front face to be absolutely flush. That's really important. Step two is to line it up in terms of front to back so that this arm lines up on top of the cross member properly. That's good. That's exactly where I want this bracket to sit. So now I mark that, and I'm going to use, because aluminum is soft and I want to be very close, I'm going to use a utility knife just to put a small scratch in the edge of the bracket there. Excellent. Now that marks that out for me. So now it's just a question of locating these two holes in the flange, and that's just simple measuring. That's not hard at all. You just have to be careful. When you're measuring, never hold the end of your tape. Hold an inch in the middle where you can get a good line. 
So I can see that from the three inch line to the center, to the edge of the hole is exactly, it's exactly five eighths of an inch plus one thirty second. Anybody who knows what that number is, put it, leave it in a comment below. Now let me show you how to find the center of those holes. If this was my clip. And I want to find, I want to find where those two holes have to go. I measured in from the edge a certain distance. I measured in to a, a, a mark, five eighths of an inch plus a 30 second. And then I measured in from, again from this edge to the next one. Never measure from here to here and then from here to here. You just multiply your mistakes. Always go back to the first place. So I, I measured those two. And then I measured from the face in and I found a mark. And from the face in and I found a mark. Now that's going to give me the the uh, the outside corner of where that circle is supposed to be. So how do you find that? Well, it's easy. These bolts are quarter 20 bolts. Quarter means a quarter inch. So whatever the diameter of your bolt is, you come over this distance, quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, and then come down from the face another quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch. And then if you join those two corners together, that gives you the exact center of the hole where you want to drill it. And this is what it looks like in real life. Those are the marks where the center of the hole is going to be. These are quarter inch bolts, but I'm going to make these holes a little bit bigger. Not a lot bigger, but a little bit bigger. So there's a little bit room for forgiveness because these don't have to be tight. And here is the bracket with the holes in it. And you'll see there's a little bit of play. There's lots of play actually around that bolt. It's not tight and that's fine. I'll explain to you why that doesn't matter at all and it'll make life a lot easier going forward. One challenge though that I have to deal with right away is when I put the bolt in from this side, hopefully you can see this, the shoulder of the head starts to catch on the curl of the angle iron before it's right down flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my grinder and just ease a little bit out around the hole so I can get that shoulder lying flatter again. Someone might say, geez, Dave, you're weakening that angle. And in theory, that's absolutely correct. Only this is a whole lot more steel than I need, or more aluminum in there than I need in the first place anyway. And it's only gonna be here and here. This will be lots of strength in between. I won't lose the integrity of the bracket at all. And there we are, just enough out of the shoulder to allow the bolt to settle down properly on its shoulders. That's good. There's still lots of metal left. Now we'll put it up on the roof. Come see this. Get the bracket set in place. Now it's nice and flush here on the front. Those holes lined up really, really nicely on in front. I've got the bolts, the two bolts set in here. That's good. So now, now you can take a look before I go any further. You see this first bracket I put on? I put two holes in the front of it. Those holes are to receive the clip. Now, I'm not going to do that on this one because this is the middle. I'm going to do the two ends that way. But you see here, I'm not sure the, the van roof is perfectly flat. In fact, it doesn't look like it is because you see the space here. I have a, uh, maybe a couple sixteenths of an inch here. It's not sitting down perfectly flat. Now, that could be a function of a lot of different things, but I want to make sure the top of my awning is straight. So I'm going to put this clip on. And when it comes time to mount this clip, I'll mount the two outside ones first, then I'll raise or lower this one so it's straight in between them, and then I'll drill these two holes here on the roof. It's only two holes, it's not rocket surgery. I'll manage that just fine. So now let me show you how to hold this down. Now, if you've watched my videos, and I hope you have, you've heard me say over and over again that the secret that every tradesman knows is that in order to cut pieces the same, whether it's aluminum or wood or whatever it might be, in order to do that work well, you have to be able to hold your work still. Jigs are handy. You got to be able to hold that work in the right position. So now with these two bolts in, I know the face, which is the most important part of this clip, is exactly where I want it. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where these two holes have to go for the bolts that go through this cross member because I want to I want to make sure that I, I get those in just the right place. There's the bracket. 
It's mounted perfectly flush on the front. That's perfect. That's excellent. And now we can't go anywhere because I've got these two bolts sent straight down tight. This, this is not going to move a bit. And then before I tightened it down, I marked where these two holes are going to go. And because this bracket is not going to move now, I made these holes a little bit big to have a little bit of play. These can be snug. So I've got a quarter inch bit in my drill. I'm going to drill these holes right here. Is to put the bolts in, it'll be done. But the first thing I'm going to do is take my time, I'm going to clamp it and drill one, put the bolt in so it can't move, take the clamp off, and then drill the next one. I got the mess cleaned up and the bracket fully installed. Now these two, as I say, these two are really tight fits, so it can't come this way at all. And these two, the two back ones, are just holding it together, it's fine. And there's the assembly ready for the awning. This guy's bolted through. First off, this hole. I drilled this hole to allow for the head of one of the bolts that hold the clips in the corner. I'm going to add another one that goes through the face plate and comes out on the bottom. And you can see the way that's put together. That's solid as a rock. That's not going to, not going to go anywhere at all. Now these bolts, when these bolts come out of the factory, they're long enough to go through the sidewall of a, a motorhome or a trailer. So they're about two and a half inches long. I cut them off because they don't need to be that long for this installation. That's pretty sweet. I have the clips mounted at each end and I've pulled a string between them just to make sure that the top is straight. And I'm going to set the center clip on that center bracket at the right height. I don't know if I'm getting carried away with that or not. I'm allowing it for a certain amount of tolerance in the build and uh i just wanted to be careful with this because when i took the bolts out of that center clip the bar did raise about an eighth of an inch so i just want to just check it and see and we are ready for an awning you see i put this larger quarter 20 countersunk screw or bolt i call it machine screw myself i don't know technically what it is and that brings it to make this clip nice and tight to hold these pieces together. I am pleased with the way these turned out. I can't see any issue with this at all. And now again, this depends on how you install your roof and where your cross members are. will determine how these clips and how these brackets go together. Let me show you the far end. At the back end, the end of my awning is going to come about here. And that's almost exactly midway between the two cross members. And I thought I might have to add one, but then instead I moved the bracket about nine inches over so that I could catch this cross member. And in doing that, Right here in the awning itself is where the mechanism is that opens and closes it. So this is where there's going to be a lot of force. So what I've done is I packed, I added an eighth inch piece of aluminum, the same thickness as the bracket, so the awning would sit up against it. I think that I didn't want that end just hanging out and, and being able to maybe collapse a little bit. But we're ready for an awning. Now this part is not as hard as I made it, but I didn't know and I didn't want to drop anything. so. I really went over the top. I used a rope at each end. If you had a decent ladder or, or a little lift of scaffold, one person could do this easily. It's not that heavy, but it is a little bit clumsy, but I was surprised at how easily or how well it's fit onto that track. Okay, I want you to see this. I was really surprised at how, how easily that just fell onto those clips. I don't know if you can see this or not, but check it out. There's a space between the rail and the awning all the way along. The only place it touches is at these, is at the uh, the brackets. And I was concerned, I don't know if you can see it or not, I was concerned about those screws or those bolts they go through to hold the clips on. They are not, maybe you can't see it, but they are not touching the back of the awning at all. There's enough clearance. So if you build your roof rack the way that I described it, you will, this will fit just fine. 
That's amazing. Okay, so I've got the ropes on there. I'm gonna open it up now and anchor it. It's surprisingly rigid right now, but there's nothing anchoring the bottom. It's just gravity holding it on. So I've got to, I've got to drop a couple of screws in. And clearly I have to put those attachments in where the brackets are. This has gone really, really, really well. I'm thrilled. I'm going to open it up now for the very first time. And I'm going to anchor the bottom of the awning to those clips. I'm going to leave it tied up just in case. This is pretty cool. Check this out. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Pretty neat, eh? Oh-ho! I am really happy with the way this turned out. Hope you found it useful. Give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. Watch these other videos, and y'all come back.